when we had two weeks between, between football games, playoff games, he did have the scans, and we got the bad news that it was indeed a tumor at the base of his spine. And on further examination, uh, we learned that it was a, a melanoma. It was a recurrence of the melanoma that we had long forgotten about. So when I heard the words, um, it looks like cancer, there was a tingling feeling in my body. Um, there was a very scared feeling. The first time you hear it, you're still overwhelmed. You're not really, you know, I wasn't thinking straight. You know, I, I didn't, still even when he said you have cancer, it's like, well, what does that mean? I'm uh, fortunate to uh, lead the melanoma research program at the Abramson Cancer Center. Uh, this is a large group of investigators, both basic scientists, clinicians, multiple disciplines, dermatology, medical oncology, uh, pathology, uh, the surgeons. This really requires a team effort, both to take care of patients, but also to advance research. Mohs micrographic surgery is a specialized technique that helps to make sure that melanomas are removed completely prior to reconstruction. The risk of a melanoma growing back on the head and neck with standard techniques is about 1 out of 10. With Mohs surgery, we decrease that risk to less than 2 out of 100. Increased cure rates and decreasing the chance that melanomas will grow back is the main benefit of this technique to patients with melanoma. There's really a close um, relationship between the clinicians that are seeing and treating patients and the researchers who are doing the cutting-edge research that allows new treatments to make their way from the research lab to the patients. One of the most exciting things is that a gene has been described that occurs in about 40 percent of patients with melanoma. This gene is called BRAF. Uh, we were part of the team that identified BRAF as the most common broken gene or activated gene in melanoma and we've been very fortunate to lead a number of clinical trials that specifically test new therapies that target this broken gene. And so what we're seeing now is that in patients with melanoma, advanced melanoma, and that means melanoma that's traveled beyond the lungs or traveled to the lungs in a distant sites, in those patients who have a BRAF mutation, if we give them this new targeted therapy, we're seeing dramatic responses in their melanoma. The next wave of immunotherapeutics relies on personalized medicine, whereby we take a patient's own T cells and generate them outside of the body to have potent effector functions that allow them to recognize that patient's own cancer. This can be translated into clinical responses. This is the next wave of immunotherapeutics in the broad sense, but even more specific now is the application of gene therapy where we can again take a patient's own immune cells, genetically engineer them now to recognize their cancer, administer those cells back to the patient, and allow for the elicitation of anti-tumor responses. As a nurse practitioner at the Cancer Center, one of the main things that I can do is really help to direct patients to other services at the Cancer Center that may be beneficial. This may include our counseling services, our psychiatry services, um, there's massage therapy, Reiki therapy, and by doing that we really make sure that we're treating the whole patient, that, um, that any side effects that are developing from the cancer treatments are really being managed. Reiki is a natural healing modality, a complementary modality that uses gentle or light touch to facilitate moving the body more towards balance and wellness and away from stress or discomfort. I think anyone can benefit from human touch and when that hand is placed upon you it really helps one to focus the patient, focus on healing and getting better and focusing on positive positive energy. Uh, I love the idea of these CAM modalities, these complementary and alternative modalities really being thought of as a complement because especially with Reiki it's not a diagnostic or um, replacement for any of the amazing therapies that Penn, Penn Medicine is already providing. I've been treating patients with melanoma for almost 25 years and I can say that this is the most optimistic time for our patients with melanoma. 
You just have to maintain a very positive attitude, and Jim always had that positive attitude. By actively looking for things like clinical trials and getting information, I felt like I was doing something for myself, not just being a victim, but being a participant in my own, you know, salvation. Have faith in, in your, your doctors. Go to the best people, treatment centers that you, that you can find. We, we sought advice from people all over the country and uh, we were told by, by everyone that we were in the best place that we could be. And that gives you a great peace of mind knowing that at least you're doing the most that you can do. It was a great experience, you know, just knowing that it's almost like you're coming back to a, you know, to, to a family when you come down here.